Hi, this is DIY Just from DIY Nexus. Today's video is on the disassembly, cleaning, lubrication, and reassembly of a vintage Snap-on F71D ratchet. This was lent to me by a friend who was going to have the Snap-on guy rebuild it, but he couldn't locate a rebuild kit for it. He found this kit, but it's for the older 20-tooth models, so we aren't going to use it. He figured it would be more helpful to let me share the overhaul process. Snap-on offered to replace it, but it's got sentimental value, so I'll just try to get it working well again. Here's a demonstration. <laughs> Can't get it to turn at all. There we go. And using the lever, it's kind of sticky. Doesn't really positive either way. So, it needs some work. Some quick background on the F71D ratchet. It's a USA made, 3 8 inch drive, fully polished, teardrop style ratchet with a round handle. These generally have 30 teeth and no quick release. Snap-on marks most of their tools with a specific style of date code. In this case, the code is located between the on and the off at the selector switch. It's a number 4 here. The font of the number 4 corresponds to the font used in the 1960s, and the 4 itself means it's from 1964. Here are the items I'm going to use today. I'll put a link to them in the description below. If you purchase any of them through those links, it helps us out, and we appreciate it. A small flat bladed screwdriver, some super lube, Loctite Blue 242, a penetrating lubricant and cleaner, and toothpicks in this case. Also, I had to use different types of cleaner, something such as brake clean, or as I say later, an ultrasonic cleaner. Just a quick disclaimer. Even though I've rebuilt a bunch of ratchets, I'm not an expert. First thing we're going to do to clean this up is get it disassembled. We use a small flat bladed screwdriver to take out the top two screws. Now that we have the screws out, we'll turn it over to take the cover plate off. Sometimes these come off easily, other times it's quite hard. I cheated, but through the magic of editing, I was able to loosen this up with a little bit of force, and now I can get it out much easier. So here's the cover plate. And we can start to see why this doesn't run very well, because it's all gummed up and partially rusted. Next thing we can take out is the anvil itself. This just gently pulls straight out and gets set aside. Now if we had a rebuild kit, we would completely disassemble this, but because we don't, we cannot fully disassemble it. On these earlier ratchets, this hand lever here, the selector switch, is actually peened into the pawl, which means they've expanded the metal so that it's kind of a one-use thing. I would take a punch, punch that out, and then pull out the pawl and the little selector spring down here and ball. In this case we don't have a kit, so I don't want to punch that out for fear that when we put it back in it'll be too loose or won't peen correctly, and then it'll be useless. What I'll do now is clean up all these parts using brake clean or carburetor cleaner or simple green or an ultrasonic cleaner or anything you've got around that'll really take out old grease. We'll clean this all up really well, including behind this piece. We'll activate it, make sure we get stuff cleaner down in there, and then dry it up really well, and then come back. Alright, we're back from a cleaning. It's amazing what that Harbor Freight ultrasonic cleaner will do. If you look here in the on-off section, it looks almost new. All the dirt's been lifted from in there, and even in the grooves in the handle. They're clean now. I'm impressed with it. If for some reason you don't have a Harbor Freight near you to pick one up, I'll put a link to a very similar item in the description. It worked pretty well. So now that everything's cleaned, we have to lubricate it. Snap-on repair kits come with super lube. In fact, 
in the repair kit we were given, here's what they give you. But since we're not going to use this one, I'll put it aside and use my full-size tube. For more information on lubrication and ratchet rebuilds, check out our other video linked above and in the description below. To start, we're going to want to take the handle and lubricate all the surfaces inside here. You don't have to put too much on, you just want a thin coating. This one's going to be challenging though because I can't remove the pawl or the spring or actually this lever back here. So to start, I'm going to use a spray type multi-use penetrating lube and spray it down inside the area where the ball and spring is first to get it down in there. Once I had cleaned this, by the way, I used some compressed air to try to dry it out as good as I could because I don't want water sitting down in the pocket where the little spring is in here. This will also displace some of the water if there is any left and prevent it from seizing up. So we'll start with this. And I'm going to actuate it back and forth a few times to get it to sink down in there. A little extra. I'm going to wipe the excess off so we can use the super lube now. And so we can get down inside, particularly behind the pole here. And in these little grooves, I'm going to get a few toothpicks, some super lube, and get it down in there directly. I'm sure a small brush would work well for this as well. I'm also going to lubricate the top area here where the selector rides. Putting too much on and we'll wipe the excess off. Alright, with that done we'll set it aside. Move on to the anvil and ratchet mechanism itself. Before I put the anvil and ratchet mechanism back in and lubricate it all up, I like to lubricate the ball. Again, I'll use a spray type lubricant that will actually go in there, penetrate, and stay. I'll use the small screwdriver to depress the ball while I spray some lubricant in. And then move the screwdriver up and down to work it in there. Now I'll wipe off the excess and put some super lube on it so we can reinstall it. Again, you don't need too much on this, just a nice thin coating. This lubricates and will protect it from corrosion. Once that's lubed up, take the handle and you want to tip the gear at a slight angle. Push the paw a little bit with it and then seat it in. You'll know it's seated when it's flush on the back. That's how it should work. Thank <laughs> you. 
we'll take the back plate, lubricate its surface. You can see where it's been touching previously. So we're going to make sure to lubricate that, the hole for the selector, and the hole for the anvil itself. And I would be a little bit careful of getting lubricant in these threaded holes. If you can prevent it, try to. Because that's where the screws are going to go in and you don't want something to prevent your Loctite from sticking. Alright, with that lubed up, reinstall that. And lastly, we're going to take the two screws and use a small amount of blue Loctite on the threads and then install them. Okay, we'll wipe this off and test it out. It's all clean, but does it work better? Smoother? Is it easier to turn? Let's see. Selector switch is much easier and more positive of a feel. The ratchet is turnable by hand now. In either direction. The ball works well and has a positive feel, and it looks better. I'm happy that I can return this to the owner in better shape than I got it. Let me know if you have any suggestions or questions in the comments below, and if you like this video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching.